Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Forge Irish Stout, Empire Fight Store and Freebets.com we're here. Dev Sane, got a little can in your hand as oh, usual, mate. Oh, it's not in your way, is it? No, <laughs> no. I saw, I saw you eyeing it up. You knew that, that this was coming. This is a uh, this is watermelon flavour of of hype. So, I like the know. cheesecake one. The yeah, cheesecake one is very good, isn't it? People have started actually calling me Cheesecake Sarni, but it's a very good drink. <laughs> very good drink. We'll put that to the side, and uh, that's my uh, sort of duty done for my sponsor. Now let's talk about this great event. Come on! Absolutely. So Cheesecake Sarni, um, <laughs> Anthony Joshua, Francis Ngannou, um, Danger Zone. We saw what he did against Tyson Fury. Um, it leaves open a question. You know, was that down to a Tyson Fury miscalculation? Was Francis Ngannou better than most thought? Was it a mixture of both? Let me know as we're now approaching Friday. Sort of, how are you feeling towards the fight? I think the, the Fury and Ngannou fight was probably the perfect storm of Tyson Fury not being at his best, having a bit of an off night, and Francis Ngannou performing much better than what people thought. Let's remember the general perception was, hey, this, especially after, remember those pads videos that went out and everyone was just laughing. Like it was being shared. Francis Ngannou on the pads, being shared with multiple crying with laughter emojis and like, this guy's got no chance whatsoever. But hey, he did have quite a chance and he yeah. did very well. And, and it's also the fact that he was so strong and Tyson tried to push him down a few times and, and realised actually he couldn't because he sort of hulked up. It was like <laughs> something out of a, like a comic book at times in there. So a perfect storm happened that night. Um, will it happen again? Dewey Cooper, his trainer, and Garnu's trainer, believes that lightning will strike twice. Uh, and one of the things, and, and he's a great interview, by the way, I'm sure you've spoken to Dewey Cooper. We will be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he said in the, uh, in the Fury fight, they were keeping a leash on Ngannou because they weren't necessarily sure that he had 10 rounds in him. But now they are sure, and now they're going to unleash him. And now Anthony Joshua is the man who's going to be on the end of the unleashed Francis Ngannou. Looking at Anthony Joshua, obviously, he's had this sort of, I don't want to say resurgence, but Ben Davison, where last time out against Otto Wally, mixed reviews, people saying, look, it's the most complete performance. That's what I think they were my words, I think I actually said, that I've seen from Anthony Joshua. And then on the other hand, someone was saying, actually, Otto Wally didn't really offer what we thought. So, and I've just seen comments as well um, from Carl Froch saying he believes Anthony Joshua is mentally fragile. Where do you sort of, when you look at Anthony Joshua, where do you, what do you make of them comments, first of all? I watched his interview um, with uh, one of your rival channels and one of your rival uh, kind of interviewers the other day and I thought it was fantastic what he said reflecting on the Day of Reckoning show and his demeanour in that show and he talked about how he was the way he was because he was going in against 15 of his enemies. That's how he saw it. These are all guys, his peers, who have said stuff about him, who he's fought, who he's sparred, who have said... Who, who, who they have said they can beat him, all of that kind of thing. I think that, if you're a fighter, does get your back up. And he had to kind of puff his chest out and let him know, look, I'm the real deal, don't be messing with me. This time, it's much more, you know, Ngannou hasn't been talking any rubbish or anything. It's been pretty chilled chat. I don't buy into this mental fragility. I think if you are an Olympic gold medalist and you carried the weight of the nation on your shoulders successfully, if you are a two-time unified world heavyweight champion who's been in high pressure situations, like the Ruiz rematch, that was high, high pressure. If he'd have lost that, it would be a long, long way back. But he won. He's been in situations where he's had to show mental strength. And right now, I think he's mentally pretty, pretty strong. And with Ben Davison, Lee Wiley, the team there, I think, I think we've got a very, very good version of Anthony Joshua. Absolutely. Coming on to the other fight on the card, the other big fight, Joe Parker and Sile Zhang. Um, two fighters coming off the back of fantastic wins. Um, obviously, Deontay Wilder beaten, went against the odds. Um, Zile Zhang with two destructive victories over Joe Joyce. Um, just talk to me about this fight. It's a great fight. I've called it the battle of the yes men. <laughs> That's what they are when it comes to boxing. When it comes to, to heavyweights saying yes to other heavyweights, Zile Zhang said yes to Filip Hergovic when everyone down the IBF rankings was saying no. He was like, yeah, I'll have a bit of that. He then said yes to Joe Joyce, back to back. And Joe Parker said yes to Joe Joyce, to Deontay Wilder, and now to Zile Zhang. It's a fascinating fight between two of the very best heavyweights in the world and the WBO interim titles on the line. Now, what that means, as you well know, Matt, 
they'll become mandatory. Whoever wins this fight will be mandatory for the world title. Now, that interim title with the WBO, sometimes, if the champion doesn't want to fight the interim, they get upgraded to world champion. Yeah, heard, yeah. So, you could well be looking at a future world heavyweight champion on Friday night. Either Joe Parker or Zhilei Zhang. It'd be big for Joe Parker to become two-time. If it's Zhilei Zhang, imagine what that means for China. That's pure Chinese power. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Ball as well with a chance to sort of say to Frank Warren, so uh, a coming out party on a grand stage against Ray Vargas. Um, the height difference is staggering. I think it's going to make uh, for an interesting matchup in the ring. In terms of what we've seen in Nick Ball, do you believe this is his moment where he makes that sort of... I say he's had standout performances before. He's made noise, but this is different. Isn't it? You're not going to find much more difficult featherweights to fight than Ray Vargas. He is fantastic. At featherweight, you know, he's unbeaten. He was unbeaten at super bantamweight. The only reason he ever got beat is because he went up perhaps too high in weight against Oshaki Foster at super feather, come up short. Oshaki Foster was brilliant that night. But Ray Vargas has looked absolutely fantastic up until that point, pound for pound perhaps as well. But Nick Ball has done everything right so far in his career. Every big stage that he has put on, where he could have potentially crumbled, he hasn't. He has risen to it. He was on the Tyson Fury versus Dillian White undercard against Tyson Fury's mate in right. Isaac Lowe. You could have easily frozen under that pressure. Wembley Stadium, what did he do? He stopped Isaac Lowe. It was huge for him. So if he can hold his nerve, if he can find the right, right tactics, he could do it and we could have a new world champion and superstar in British boxing. This is Matador versus Ball. Yeah, how long? How long, be honest? How long have you been waiting to unleash that line or have you done it in every interview? I've done it in every interview but and I tried to do it on the stream. Oh, mate, I fluffed my lines. I was like, this is Matisse's door versus Ball. It just messed it up. So annoying. I had to do it like three times. Johnny Nelson was laughing at me. And uh, yeah, but I got it right in this boxing social interview. So that's, that's all that matters. This means more. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, quickly, um, Tyson Fury. Um, Looks in terrific shape. I've um, seen him do an interview the other day with um, Charlie Parsons. Um, seems in good spirits. I believe he's coming here this weekend to see the um, see this fight. Um, what are we expecting against Usyk? Obviously, we've had this delay. A um, lot of opinions, a lot of things thrown out into the, the media, into the ether. Some of it absolutely staggering from my point of view. What have you made of all the chit-chat in between and all the conspiracy theories and everything going around this delay? I mean... Yeah, your thoughts? No, I, I think the conspiracy theory stuff has been put to bed really at this point. I feel like that's that's probably a done with subject because there's enough stuff out there to, to just shut that up. And it should be anyway. Like He was clearly couldn't fight. Um, in terms of Tyson Fury being here, is it good or bad for Anthony Joshua? It could be good. It could spur him on. It could inspire him. It could make him try to do a better job than Fury did and then look over at Fury and say, hey, you couldn't do that. At the same time, it could add some pressure. He could box out of character. He might make mistakes. I don't know, but I feel as though it would probably inspire him. And I hope we get to a position where, you know, they're around each other a little bit. You know, maybe something freaky happens. Or just, not, not freaky, but, you know, maybe just get in the ring kind of thing. Well, first off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's a great ingredient. If Tyson Fury turns up in a... Uh, in a mischievous mood, yeah. that's great news for viewers. And for, obviously, Alexander Usyk coming up, what what type of performance are you expecting to see now that you saw, obviously, the shape that it was in coming? It didn't look like the one who turned up for Francis Ngannou. Yeah, look, he looked in great shape, right? Um, and it, it's a shame that the fight didn't happen, you know, when it was supposed to happen, but he looked in great shape. He looks like he's keeping in great shape, so I'm expecting the best Tyson Fury that's possible right now. The best Tyson Fury against the best Alexander Usyk. How does that fight play out? I, I'm not going to pick a winner because I am hoping to uh, to speak to Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury, and uh, and I don't want to have made my pick and then you know they don't yeah. talk to me. I think I'm a bit bit, bit bitten and shy about that, Matt. But um, okay. I think it's a fascinating fight. Uh, a lot of people point to Tyson Fury's size. He could be about 50 pounds heavier than Alexander Usyk. Yeah. There is a new factor now in terms of that. That cut, is Usyk going to go after him? Is it OK? It's fascinating. and The only way we'll find out is in May. Dev, always appreciate your time. Hopefully we'll catch up further on in the week. We'll look forward to this fight week on Friday. Me too. Tune in.